Hello guys, welcome to this new video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the uh, some cerebellar notes for the um, for Doctor Najib's lectures because Doctor Najib lectures are three hours long, and taking his notes are very very difficult. So I made a quick summary of his notes, which are twelve pages long. I'm going to putting the link in the description down below. So make sure to go and check that out. You can download it and completely edit it and use it. So without further ado, I'm going to start off with. The first video of Dr. Najib, Cerebellum has three videos. This is going to be talking about the first, and now we'll be talking about the other two later on. Um, cerebrum, ha cerebrum can be divided into three main functions. The first one is balance, the second one being the tone of the muscles, and the third one being coordination. And you can remember this with a mnemonic called Bitcoin, so B I T C O coin. Um, and the lesions, when we get lesions, obviously it's very, very easy, so you're going to lose balance as in B, and then we're going to be losing the tone, and we're also going to be losing the coordination. So hypotonia, economic posture, and uncoordinated movement cerebellum is at the back of the brainstem embryologically speaking over here we're going to have three main things is procephalon mesocephalon and uh, rhombencephalon so the main thing i want to be concentrating is rhombencephalon because rhombencephalon divides into two metencephalon and myelencephalon so if you look over here uh, procephalon divides into two mesencephalon divides into something but this metencephalon is the main one which will make you making the cerebellum which is going to be located obviously at the back of the brainstem the cerebellum is extremely extremely um like it can be divided into three main categories and i'll be showing explain the anterior lobe which is going to be known as the paleo cerebellar functions the posterior lobe which is another the neurocerebellum problems uh, functions and then there's going to be the uh, follicular load which is going to be having the vestibular uh, or the archaeocerebellum things archaeocerebellum is going to be primitive in nature it is also in the fish and it is there with the balance um, and I'll just show you guys the picture of the so yeah this top part is going to be anterior the bottom part in the middle part is going to be posterior lobe and the, uh, the lower lobe will be the follicular nodular lobe so anterior uh, posterior this whole thing will be posterior so in this diagram it's a bit weird but the top part is anterior the second part is posterior lobe as a combined and full echinorial lobe will be the third part um the, like i said that and yes the fissures fissures is what divides everything so from the anterior and the posterior we divide by the primary fissure and so i'll show you the anterior and posterior we divide by this primary fissure and the uh and the uh and the uh, a primary uh, the, the posterior lobe will be divided from the uh, follicular nodular lobe uh, by a dorsal lateral <coughs> A dorsal lateral fissure or a posterior lateral fissure. So this over here will be a posterior lateral fissure or a dorsal lateral fissure. Um, long, so we can also have over here longitudinal depression, which is otherwise known as the vermis, and lateral to the vermis is known as the cerebellar hemispheres. The side of the vermis, this is going to be an area of a paravermal area, or and I think that the paravermal intermediate uh, zone are the same thing. But I need to double check on what he said over here. The next thing Dr. Najib talked about was the cerebellar functions and their details. And the basically, cerebellum controls the coordination ipsilaterally. And for example, if there's a lesion on the right side, the lesion will be on the right side of the body, not like the cerebrum, which is always opposite. So uh, basically, just to uh, kind of explain this, uh, let's just say you have a problem in your right side of your cerebrum that means all the manifestations will be on your left side because all the tracks stay cross but with cerebellum they do not cross and whichever side your cerebellum gets damaged the same side your problems will be there um, so this is a quick picture like there's some basic anatomy that the, uh, this is a bit more about the homunculus so the over here we see the vermal area which is going to have the axial musculature the paravermal area which is going to be for the limbs and the legs the posterior lobe is going to be there for the head, the neck, the trunks, and, uh, and are going to be under control of the vermis. The basic um, terminology is that there is going to be um, a, a primary motor cortex, there's going to be a premotor cortex, and there's going to be a supplementary motor cortex. So the primary motor cortex is where the lesion is, and there, if, there's, if there's a problem, then the, then the lesion is going to be on the opposite side of the brain. The premotor uh, part of the cortex is there going to be there for planning, and supplementary is going to be there for primitive movements, primitive movement of our trunk. Uh, how does the CNS coordinate the movement? So basically, the CNS controls the movement, and uh, what the cerebellum is, is that it's a master planner. So it, it knows your initial picture, it knows your future picture. 
and allows both of them to happen. Another functioning of the cerebellum is that there is going to be, if there's overshooting, we can get corrections. So just a very easy way that Dr. Najib explains is that if you are to close your eyes and touch your fingers, you can you can easily uh, touch them. If if you uh, let's just say if you touch your fingers very fast, then you're gonna have you're gonna have a mistake, but your cerebellum can easily easily correct it because it knows the uh, the image. So that's one of the ways to test that. The fibers of the cerebellum, there are two main fibers. That's the main thing I want to highlight for you guys. There are two main fibers. There's a mossy fibers and then there are climbing fibers. Uh, so uh, mossy fibers are there that they're going to be taking excitatory fibers and they're, and yes, so the climbing fibers are very specific. So uh, they're, they're only taking from inferior all very fibers, whereas all other fibers are taken from mossy fibers. Here are some more details. If you want to check it out, link will be in the description. So Dr. Najib, uh, part two, what, what does Dr. Najib say in his second part of his video? First of all, he starts off in the first six minutes. He talks a little bit about the structure of cerebellum. So he kind of gives you a very nice mnemonic called my personal garden. In my personal garden, there's a molecular layer, there's a perkinian layer, and there's a granular layer. There can be also stimulation and indirect, indirect inhibition of the deep cerebellar nuclei. Um, there can be a flash shaped nuclei in the molecular layer and with many many dendrites coming down they are axons and they are inhibitory and and they release GABA. Uh, the climbing fibers they release aspartate this is stimulatory and they are uh, they are, they are going to be a form of uh, they, they, they are going to be a form of this stimulatory and I'm going to be explaining that in much more detail. So it gets a bit confusing here with the mossy fibers. Mossy fibers will stimulate granular cells, whereas the climbing fibers are very, very specific and they will be stimulating the, I believe, the, uh, st and stimulate the perkinous cells. And yep, yeah, and then they go molecular and bifurcate. There's a granular layer over here, granular layer. The granular layers are the layer that they supply the um, um, uh, fibers. We can compare between climbing and mossy fibers. It's very easy to compare them. Climbing fibers are only coming from inferior or livery, so they get only uh, each climbing fiber innovates one perkinia cells, whereas mossy fibers they are going to be multiple in, in, in going to multiple granular. And if you guys are a bit lost here, don't worry. I'm going to be showing you guys a picture very soon. So um, this right on the right side, although I haven't labeled it properly, but this is going to be a mossy. So M on the right, and then we're going to be happy over here the climbing fibers. The mossy fibers will go up and innovate your big P over here, the perkinia, whereas your climbing fibers will go up here and gonna be in a, gonna go stimulate the granular cells. So uh, just to quickly go on out here, that the output is almost done by this deep nuclei. Let me show you guys where the deep nuclei is. The deep nuclei is the bad boy over here. Um, then there can be climbing or mossy will stimulate the perkinia and they will inhibit the deep, deep nuclei output. So they both will stimulate this, the perkinia will release GABA, 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 and GABA will inhibit this and not allow it. There, there are inhibitory cells and there are basket and star and there's me I think star cells or stellate cells. So let me show you guys where those are. Let's just zoom in over here. So perkinia is the big boy over here, but they are on the side. You can imagine your basket and your stellate cells. The basket and your um, still it so whenever you get whenever a perkinia gets excited these basket and still it will always be there to inhibit it the general rule i'll put it over here is that when you're firing then you'll be surrounded by inhibitory neurons so that's kind of like just imagining whenever there's someone successful there will always be haters so there's always going to be inhibitors and your and the perkinia or the granular cell will always be the stimulatory let's speak a little bit about granular cells granular cells will stimulate the uh, perkinia and that will stimulate the basket and the still it will inhibit uh will in it will inhibit the um, it will in it will be inhibiting it's it will be inhibit obviously the perkinia cells so it's kind of like a double edged sword that you're stimulating them and uh, guys this one was not in dr najib's lecture but it's a very very nice diagram it shows the climbing fibers are coming here those excitatory they go to your perkinia over here your perkinia gets excited it releases its inhibitory on the deep nuclei the deep nuclei gets inhibited and when it gets inhibited it's now uh, uh, it, that's going to be producing response mossy fibers which is the messy fibers coming from everywhere also multiple granular cells multiple like one two three multiple and then it goes up to the parallel fibers then it comes 
comes here to Prakriti. Um, next thing I'll be talking about is a little bit more that how, how to classify it. So the cerebellum can be classified, like I said, anterior, posterior, floral nodule, or it can be divided into archicerebellum, neocerebellum, and paleocerebellum uh, uh, pathways. So the archicerebellum is going to be involved with the um, is going to be involved with the spinal cerebellum, you know, cerebral. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, archae, archae would be for vestibular, pedia would be spinal, and then the, sorry, I meant to say neuro, neuro cerebellar, which is going to be the um, middle part, is going to be cerebral cerebellum. So that's that's how it is. So um, in term, this is going to be like your follicular nodule load over here, nodular lobe over here, your spinal cerebellar will be your posterior lobe over here, uh, or in other words, no, this will be uh, this will be your posterior lobe, and this will be anterior lobe. This will be the top boy. So ba the basic vestibule, basic vestibule has a vestibule, urticle, and saccule, and they have sensory epithelium. If you move your head and the semi canal, and then the sensory epithelium, and they will generate action potential. They will enter the cerebellum as the vestibular nerves, and some of the fibers will go uh, go, and some fibers. Uh, this is uh, well, well, this, some of the fibers will go uh, and um, uh, some of the fibers will go and then the fibers uh, entering the inferior cerebellum peduncle will reach the cortex and they, uh, they are climbing and they will go to the cortex and from the nucleus and the fibers then they go to the deep nucleus and from the cortex the fibers of the deep nucleus will go to the brain stem to the vestibular part and then downwards to the stairs the spinal tract and then the fibers will interact with the reticular nucleus and the vestibular nucleus very very complicated let me just break that down so the vestibular utricle saccule or sensory epithelium which help you move the head and the semi canal and the sensory epithelium will generate action potential okay that, that we can have a break here and then this 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 uh, action potential from the um, vestibular system from the vestibular system will uh, then enter the cerebellum and as the vestibular nerve and the fibers will then go uh, go and enter enter the um, inferior cerebellar peduncle and reach the cortex and they are climbing and they go to the cortex from the nuclei and these fibers then go to the deep nucleus and then they go to the cortex uh, and the fibers of the deep nucleus and so for so then they will go to the cortex and the fibers are going to the deep nucleus and and they they, they go to the deep nucleus from from the deep nucleus it will go to the brain go to the brain stem and the vestibular part and then down the spinal tract and then some fibers will interact with the reticular nuclei vestibular nuclei going down what are the unique functions of the vestibular tract the vestibular cerebellar fibers stimulate the vestibular nucleus complex and uh, balance and they are going to be good they have good for balance extensional muscles and they should uh, have a, nine, uh, a good, good balance and upper fibers which the media longer to uh, media long to the vascular um, will coordinate the head and eye movements mm. vestibular spinal vestibular spinal is mean balance and tone in the extensional muscles and uh and 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 um, extension muscles downward and upwards it will stimulate cranial three four six and at the medial longitudinal fasciculus and this will control the eye and the tone the detailed structures and the function of spinal cerebral vermis spinous vermis area and the information from the trunk and the spinal cord so we can also we, we, what we're going to be having is these dorsal spinal tra cerebral tracts the first neuron peripheral nerve through the dorsal horn and then and then the nucleus will then go ipsilateral go to the inferior peduncle and the dorsal spinal cerebral tract will then go to the vermal and the paranormal area and then they will go uh, through the upper limbs to c5 and then terminate in the nucleus cuneus cerebellar um we can see over here there's a very nice table which i i prioritize from um, from the uh, spinal cerebral tract, which are from from Wikipedia, very nice table over here. Dorsal cerebellum pathway. It is coming from the Golgi tendon organs and the muscle spindle, and these are going to be going ipsilateral, and they're going to be going to your uh, lower limbs, so your legs and your body. Ventral uh, anterior spinal tract are only coming from your Golgi tendon, not from your muscle spindle, and they're going to go to your up, uh, also your uh, your legs and your body. Cuneus cerebellum is going to be from your muscle spindles and your Golgi tendons, and they're going to your arm. And the spinal cerebral tract is again from your Golgi tendon and it is also coming from your arms. 
and obviously cerebral majority of everything is ipsilateral. Uh, we're going to be talking a bit more tracks, so cuneo, dorsal, ventral, spinal tracts, Dr. Najib talked about them over here. The ventral serospinal cerebral tract, they will go, they will cross opposite, and then they will go to the ipsilateral, uh, and then they will cr cr uh, cross, and they go to the cerebellum, and then they cross to the spinal cerebellar peduncle. So basically, from reading this paragraph, you can basically conclude that they cross uh, uh, twice. And and by, when they cross twice, they are no longer they are they are not contralateral. So therefore, they are going to be ipsilateral because once you when you cross only one time, you are contralateral. But if you cross twice, you're back to ipsilateral. And they, and then uh, so spinal cerebellar tracts are going to be there. Uh, like this, again, vermal being the middle area, will be axial paravermal or the paranormal areas. Those are going to para paravermal areas are going to be, or the intermediates are going to be the distal limbs. They're going to be collecting information from the Golgi tendon and muscle spindles, like I mentioned this previously, and then from the cortical spinal tract is going to be bringing information down, and this information is going to be um, going bring, and they and they they know the. Um, they're going to be interacting with the cerebellum, and the, the second the cerebellum will, will know the intended movement. So, uh, so first the spinal cerebellum brings this information down. The second thing is that the cerebellum will be bringing the information down. The third thing is that the cerebellum will take the final motor or order and then go to the cerebellum, and there are going to be mossy fibers. They will activate deep nuclei and inhibit deep nuclei. The last video of Dr. Najib is the, one of the better videos, and in here he quickly talks about the really nice nuclei. So don't eat uh, greasy food, D as in dentate. And, and by the way, the, this is going to be from lateral to medial. So from the lateral part of the cerebellum, um, let's go back to the cerebellum picture. So lateral to medial, so dentate, don't eat, so in belly form, greasy, uh, globy form, F as in fastidial. So these are going to be the four nuclei that are going to be there. Um, so lateral to median, dented, and body form globus and vestigial. Interpost nucleons are going to be basically these two nucleons. So these two nucleons are the interpost nucleons and uh, medial lateral. I mentioned that. Um, the the cerebellar tracts, like I said, is ventral, dorsus, cuneo cerebellar, and they're going to uh, they come from the globus and a body form, and and then they go to the premotor and the primary motor area. Uh, the inter there are going to be more systems over here, such as. Cerebrorubrothalamic fibers, cerebrothalamic fibers, and thalamocortical fibers. Uh, guys, I really definitely uh, recommend watching Dr. Najib's last video from 11th minute to the 13th minute to the words the end because he really summarizes everything perfectly. He talks about the output, which is from the deep nuclei, they go to the brain stem. He talks about the vestibular cerebellar pathway, the vestibular apparatus to the follicular neural lobe, and coming back to the vestibular apparatus and then going to the vestibular spinal, and then it's going to be and it's going to be influencing cranial number three, four, and six. The spinal cerebellum will control the tone, information, and um, and at the ending, he basically talks about the pontine are coming from the cortex, the cuticle, mm, cerebellar pathways is also going to be involved there, and this is going to be part of the cerebellum, there's no connection with the spinal cord and the vestibular system, and the information is going to go to the cerebral cortex, and the most important nuclei are going to be are going to be the dent, uh, dentate, and there there are also dentothalamic fibers, dentorubothalamic fibers, three motor, one sensory, dentorubothalamic fibers, and thalamic fibers are three motor, one sensory, vestibular spinal fibers, cortical quanto uh, cerebellar pathways, they mean those for impending and tenant movie are going to be spinal cerebral track race. I mean, ending I end this qu um, uh, quick session of Dr. Najib. First of all, big thank you, Dr. Najib, and I highly recommend watching his uh his video because he explains it very, very well. And he, yeah, he is the best for these type of jobs. I'm going to be ending this with a quiz from Dr. Najib because he really likes the quiz. So, I'm going to be doing this. And um, the first quiz is going to be the uh, where. Um, does the ventral spinal cerebellar pathway uh, pathway take information from so the answer for that will be from the uh, you guys can pause this video so deep uh, deep uh, tendon uh, say uh, deep uh, golgi organ and uh, go from the golgi tendon organs so the golgi t tendon uh, tendon organs and this is from the legs um and from the legs um um then uh, i'm gonna be talking about i'm gonna ask you guys another question uh okay we're uh can you tell me the um, can you tell me uh, the four nucleus of the cerebellum um so pause this video if you don't know it so it's basically don't eat greasy food so dentate uh eat and body uh, form uh glow 
numbers and a uh, vestigial can you tell me uh, tell me the uh, the two fissures of the cerebellum so that would be the primary fissure and the dorsolateral fissure or the posterior lateral um, fissure can you can you tell me uh, the pathway which which crosses twice twice so you guys can pause this video here and that's gonna be spinal cerebellar and yeah i think this video is becoming very long but this is a 20 minute video the pdf of this is going to be in the description so 20 minutes and i summarized the whole doctor cheap three hours and 15 minutes and i hope you guys found this useful and i definitely recommend you guys watch doctor cheap thank you for watching this video i hope to see you guys next time